Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Edge 2014. Brought to you by IBM. Now here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. It's okay, I'm here. We're looking for you. Okay, welcome back everyone here live in Las Vegas for IBM Edge. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. Joined by co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of wikibon.org. Our next guest, Tom Cook, CEO of Permabit. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, John. Great uh, to be here, thanks. So tell us what's happening at IBM Edge from your perspective. What is your take on the, uh, the world here at IBM Edge? Uh, so, uh, you know, top level is uh, primary storage is on a tear with data efficiency and you know, a perfect example of that is SVC incorporating RTC, real-time compression, and the market is really, really looking for data efficiency now, and IBM is definitely out there with it, and they're starting to fill in their portfolio, and I think it's going to be a really exciting time in that. So infrastructure and hardware is obviously the big part of it. We know the IBM story recently announced the servers going to Lenovo, high-end systems, we got to see power systems, a bunch of analytics, but hybrid cloud is where everyone wants to go. They want to converge infrastructure on-premise, but the hybrid cloud is the path. Um, do you see it that way? And how, what, is it, what does that mean for customers? I mean, they have data operations, yep. they got global footprints. How do you see that picture evolve? Well, let's boil it down to the guys who've been really disruptive today. You know, the Nutanix of the world, the, the um, um, you know, uh, Pures, and other people like that. The, you know, you could put them into the AFA uh, class, you could put them into the Converge Architecture class. Heck, you could even look at Amazon and Google and say, well, they're in the cloud space. But underneath it all, I don't think all those categories really matter as much as data efficiency does, because they're all playing the data efficiency game. The reason Nutanix and Pure are winning is because they're bringing data efficiency to the solution, and it's, it's kind of waking up the incumbents at this time. So we're seeing a real drive to adopting technology in this area. So can you find data efficiency because you know Dave and I have been riffing on this concept that we we coined, I guess no one else has coined it yet, but data first. You heard mobile first, cloud first. We're yep. seeing a, uh, around the corner, you're seeing data first. But what do you mean by data efficiency? Is that just protection? Is that backup, recovery, dedupe, all the above? So let's talk about it related to primary. It's really uh, thin provisioning, deduplication, and compression, and doing those things so that you, can, that you can operate in real time. So all these things have to occur in line, and that means it takes, care, that takes advantage of our edge, which is very high performance, very high IOPS, uh, low footprint, very scalable, and extreme uh, savings in terms of time to market. But when you really think about data efficiency, it's all about cost efficiency, it's all about uh, higher IOPS, and it's all about doing more work with less dollars all the time. That's where the disruptive companies are starting to impact the marketplace, and that's where all the majors are going with their product lines so, too. So Tom, I got to ask you, what you, I don't know if you're sure you saw it, but the million dollar guarantee. Yeah. Right, so what do you make of the million dollar guarantee? What's, I mean, it's, Fun marketing, you know, it's a little different than what you see at IBM, very professional, yep. you know, doing business here and staying above the fray, but EMC World, we heard about the, the million dollar guarantee. What do you make of that? Well, I thought it was a really interesting uh, guarantee. I was here, I saw, this, uh, saw the uh, uh, address, and I think it shows two things. First, it shows that EMC notices what Pure is doing out there and Pure's being successful with it at some level. But I think it also exposes kind of the Achilles heel of Pure in that if you fill up their system, they slow down. They go from inline to a background operation to an offline operation. And that really slows down your, your, your operations within the array. Well, that's, customers aren't going to withstand that today. And so EMC's point on that is we can bring it to its knees and if you lose latency and you don't have predictable behavior, you don't have a, an array that's effective in the AFA market. So help us understand this a little bit because you and I have talked a lot about yep. data reduction techniques and the importance of bringing that to primary yep. and the importance of, of, of doing that in a way that doesn't impact performance in a negative way. Mm -hmm. Clearly IBM with real-time compression, the acquisition they made from StoreWise, does that, you know, great technology. You guys with Alberio do that. Are you saying that, that Pure 
is like a hybrid. So Pure, Pure uses what we call a double pass deduplication methodology where they stage data and then they bring it into storage. It means that there are two hits to the data. And it means as that, as that buffer fills up, there's latency incurred. And that's a challenge with their technology today. And they're going to have to change it in order to progress and in order to scale that. And I'll tell you right now, what we see in the field from other companies is they, they are on to that. And I think that's what David Goulden's million dollar bet was all about. He knows that it can be exploited and it's, it's what they want to drive home in the marketplace. Well, it was, it was funny, I, I, I joked, it was like, uh, that's like for three par guaranteeing that the, the array is going to be yellow. <laughs> yeah. but, but what it did was it shined a light on what they see as a competitive weakness. Now of course Pure will respond saying, look, we're kicking butt, we're selling a lot of these systems, we're driving performance. Um, every array has to do garbage collection, blah, blah, blah. So what do you make of that? Well, so I, I think the garbage collection problem is, it is a real issue, it's an architectural issue. They'll be working with that too. The thing is, they got $350 million in the bank and they're exploiting that and, and starting to take business out there in the marketplace. The fact is, they've got deduplication and compression and other people don't and they're using that to their advantage today. It has nothing to do with all flash array. It has to do with the data efficiency and that's what's really striking the primary marketplace today. You know, uh, IBM, EMC, HDS, they all have a lot of flash in their primary, so they can compete very effectively in terms of performance, but it's about price parity with performance, and that's what Pure is exploiting. Tom, what do you make of the valuations today that you're seeing in, uh, um, in flash? And they're bifurcated, right? I mean, you, you saw Violin go out with a, a purported billion dollar valuation, now it's you know, way down, obviously, maybe a few hundred million. Uh, we've seen Fusion. Yep. You know, kind of bounce around. Now you hear Pure with a $3 billion valuation, but of course, it's easy to have a valuation that doesn't fluctuate when you're private. What do you make of all that? You think it's warranted? Uh, so I think that the differential is all driven by data efficiency and their ability to exploit that in the marketplace. They have a cost differential today, an effective cost differential over people who don't have data efficiency in their product. And you compare that to uh, uh, Texas Memory Systems, which was acquired, or Violin, or other people that are in the marketplace, their valuations are somewhere between one-eighth or ten, uh, one-tenth of what um, peers are today, and I think that's all earned through data efficiency, not through the fact that they're an all-flash array. There's plenty of all-flash arrays out yeah, there. Yeah, right, so your premise is that they can deliver that efficiency, they're very feature-rich, but it's the efficiency, ultimately, that, that matters. And, and so that's got to bode well for you, no? Yeah, I mean, you, uh, you just look at the situation. If, if all things being equal, if you had a, a VMAX array or an 8000 array from IBM uh, that was as cost efficient as the pure data efficient uh, all flash uh, appliance, you'd buy the more fully featured uh, product from your, from your current vendor. So that's what they're all banking on. So, so do you think these valuations, I mean, you remember, when we saw the run up on the storage virtualization suppliers, whether it was uh, Equalogic or Left Hand, and then subsequently 3PAR, which set it off, and, and, uh, and Compellent, and I guess you could throw in Isilon in there, and, and I guess Data Domain, which was different, it really wasn't virtualization, but it was part of that sort of last storage bubble. It, it, it feels like this next one, this next storage bubble, is. Is, is, is going to be bigger. Feels pretty frothy, doesn't it? Does. It does, and do you think it's warranted? Uh, so, I, I mean, I think this is a very high valuation, and they've got a whole lot of growing to do. In a market that's deflationary overall, that's a big mountain to climb. But hey, there's some really smart money people involved, there's some really smart people involved in their company, they're executing really well right now. Let's see whether they can become you know, a 500 million or a billion dollar company to grow into that uh, valuation. Because I, I, I feel like the, the virtualization bubble, I'll call it, actually was uh, validated. I, I think it, um, I mean, I think if you look at the acquisitions, even, I mean, the biggest exit I think was 3PAR, at, 2.4, 2.5. Again, throw data domain at a similar exit. I think those investments paid off for their respective buyers. I mean, where would HP be without 3PAR? I mean, that's you know a multi-billion dollar product now for them. Um, EMC with Isilon, EMC with data domain. So um, I think they were warranted. What we're, John and I are trying to figure out is, okay, is this, like you said, it's a deflationary market, so you wonder, okay, is it going to be as warranted as the last bubble? But it feels like because it's eating into such a big value layer mm -hmm. of the storage business, that tier one high end, that um, it could be, could be warranted, so. Well, certainly all the tier ones are 
very much taking notice of this and they're developing their strategies and they're going to be rolling out products. So I certainly think we're going to see that happen. But in addition to that, we're in a period of time where Google and Amazon and people like that are starting to really focus on the storage marketplace. Imagine if they take 25% of this market space and they contract the market that way. Suddenly it's a lot harder to grow a business. And we're going to see a lot of, uh, basically a tongue war out there to, uh, to really battle out for this space. Well, I think it's a great point. I mean, I think that's the wild card. It's kind of like the open source, yeah. you know, neutralizer in, in Microsoft, so. So, uh, to, to take that one step further, if that really happens, and if the third platform really happens, and that transition occurs faster, maybe we won't see another array company acquired by a large company, because it won't need to be. Mm -hmm. uh, or the technologies that are out there are solving yesterday's problems instead of tomorrow's problems. It'll be real interesting to see how this plays out. So John Chambers at Cisco Live is going on this week. He's saying that there's going to be a huge consolidation in the IT industry. Do you agree with that? I completely agree. I think we will see exit in the, in the storage business. I don't think we'll see net entry with successful companies. Um, on the array side, David and I were just talking, there's only a handful of people that certainly are on the flash side knocking it down at the top. Um, and you don't even see EMC at the top on that market. So certainly the horses are jockeying for that last stretch. But there's a lot of people who don't even make the list of Flash. Well, uh, uh, all the majors are shipping a lot of Flash today, so I think we're going to see them continue. Uh, just a few days ago, I was talking to somebody who said, oh, but you know, the new arrays have 10 times the efficiency. No, they don't. They really don't. Uh, I mean, efficiency, yes, but not performance. And so the, the major array companies, the large companies, the tier ones, are going to compete with that very effectively. In the Sorry, you said the, the premise was that the the spinning disk arrays or the hybrid arrays well, have 10x? The, the premise this person was making was that the all flash arrays oh, can okay. do things a whole lot better than what the, what the uh, high end arrays can do in a conversion to flat. I disagree with that. We're going to see the high end arrays move into um, certainly hybrid, which they are today, and more flash over time. They'll be very effective. Well, the th we've been talking about this here at IBM Edge, is the, and SPC is the best example of this, yes. is the stack the 14 year old stack, um, which many people might say, oh well, that's, it's old. Okay, well sometimes being old is a good thing because it's Fully robust. Fully featured. It's a, if you're fiber channel, Solid. being old is good, right. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and, and I think the same thing is true for storage stack. It's very, it's non-trivial to build a storage stack that works where you can recover, where you can do you know, software upgrades that are non-disruptive and yes. on and on and on. And that's the advantage that the legacy arrays have. You know, at, the, at the same time, what I don't know is how much of the business that's being done there is for performance reasons versus sort of software so storage service reasons. And that's going to be interesting to see. Yeah. It, well, I bet historically 80% of the dollars that have gone into storage innovation have gone into performance tuning. So you build a feature, but then you have to get it fast. Yeah. And that's one of the things that's been vexing the market for a period of time. And uh, Flash makes some things easier. Deduplication and compression what are two of those things that it makes easier. So we think this is really a boon to the industry. Now your model is, is you've, you've developed a, a data reduction technology that's, that's um, a minimal performance impact in line and you've, you've, you're delivering it uh, via a software model, an SDK. That's right. Let's talk about that a little bit and, and, and how the uptake has been. Yeah, so we, you know, when, when we went to do this, we just looked at the marketplace and we said there doesn't need to be another array company, although some people have proved us wrong there. Yeah, they're building yeah, well, them. Right. Hey, you know, good for them. They're taking on a different battle than we are. What we really thought is we had an ability to make other people's storage better, much more cost efficient, and do it in a way that, that they would have to invest five years and $50 million and make a lot of mistakes. So we've done that, and we're bringing that to major uh, players today. You know, our real test is whether our customers are successful. In 2013, our customers grew 50% year to year over 2012. Uh, this year, we're shipping 1,500 arrays per quarter. Uh, we're shipping in 1,500 arrays per quarter, and we're tracking to save enterprise two and a half to three billion dollars in net investment. We're really proud of that, that track record of our customers and our technology helping them do that. And you're an arms dealer. You, you're, you, you, you're friends of everybody, right? I mean, we, the we'd most love part. to be friends with absolutely <laughs> everybody. We're not with everybody. Yeah, yeah. Yet, <laughs> what's your big goal for the year? My question for you, final question for the segment is, what's your, what's your goals for the year? Obviously the company is on a great path. You're kind of sailing in waters where you know, there aren't a lot of icebergs, but yet you could get a watch out for some rough seas, if you will. Uh, a lot of consolidation, but you know, you're going in as days as an arms dealer, but it's a hot trend. You, the trend is your friend. There's a mega 
growth going on in front of you. What's your yeah. strategy? Uh, we, you know, we'd like to we'd like to wring more out of this marketplace and help our customers, our OEM customers, to deal with the deflationary impact so that they can sell more of their products at better margin margins in an environment that's not going to be friendly. That's that's our goal. If we can save customers two and a half or three billion dollars this year, we'll be real proud of the year that we had as a company. And what's the status of the company? Employee headcount? What's this, what's going on with the stuff? We're a private company, uh, 45 people, growing like stink right now. And you're in Massachusetts? Yes, we are. Anything in California offices? Yeah, we've got field sales operation in California and support, too. Great, all right, well, we're in Palo Alto, we're in uh, Marlboro, this is theCUBE. Tom, appreciate you coming in. CEO of Permit, Big Tom Cook. Uh, Startup making it making its ways into the the, the green waters of, uh, of of the storage industry. Day, I, I think it's going to be very lucrative. Market. Navigating through the cartels. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> Thanks, right, John, for the Thanks big so. the big feed coming down. It's the cube. We're right back live here in Las Vegas, right at the Edge, right after this short break. <laughs>